Hey guys, welcome back. Android P D P4 got ported to Mi A1 recently, and now let's see how to trivialize our Mi A1 as the phone doesn't have project trouble support officially. Step by step guide to install Android P and fix for few issues. So I was running the latest Oreo 8.1 with July security patch before trying this Android P ROM. There are a couple of files you need for flashing this Android P build. First download all these files and save them under ADB and Fastboot folder where you're gonna execute ADB and Fastboot commands. Once you have downloaded the required files, first open settings on your phone, system, about phone and here tap 5 times on the build number until it says developer options are enabled. Once it is done, go one step back, open developer options and here enable OEM unlocking if you have a lock bootloader and also enable USB debugging. Once you have enabled it, reboot to bootloader by holding volume down plus power button or you can also type adb reboot bootloader command within windows power shell. Unlocking bootloader will wipe entire internal storage with the recent firmware versions so take a backup of everything you have on your phone. And about backup, apart from taking backup of apps and storage files like pictures and videos, I would also suggest to take a backup of firmware partitions like boot, modem, persist and they can be useful in case something goes wrong in the process of reverting back to completely stock. For backup, I have used this tool which is called low level backup. This is the XTA thread for this app and as you can see the requirements are Windows PC and Qualcomm Emergency Mode drivers. The tool can be downloaded from the GitHub page. Here select clone or download and download zip. So once you have downloaded, extract the contents of the zip file to your new folder. Now use a good quality USB-C cable, preferably the stock one. Connect your phone to the PC. If you are still on bootloader or fast boot mode, it is fine. If not, boot back by holding volume down and power button. And now copy this command which says fast boot OEM EDL and type it within Windows PowerShell or command window prompt. Just in case if you don't know how to open the Windows PowerShell, go to the ADB and fast boot folder. Hold shift on your keyboard plus right click on your mouse and paste the command here now. Your phone should now boot a blank state and if you notice any errors about failing flash on PowerShell, just ignore them. Now get back to your PC or laptop, right click on this PC, manage and select device manager or you can simply search for device manager and under ports you can see something like this Qualcomm HS USB QLoader 9008 with a COM port if you have EDL drivers installed. If not, the output will look something like this. If you belong to the second category where you have QUSB bulk state, extract Qualcomm drivers to your new folder, right click on QUSB bulk tab, select update driver, let me pick from a list of available drivers, select have disk and now navigate to the Qualcomm driver folder we have just extracted and open this file by name QCMDM and install this driver. Now under ports it should look something like this for you. Remember the port number and now go back to the low level backup folder. Open the config file with notepad and make sure if the com port in the second line is same as the one under the device manager. If not, change it for me the com port under device manager is 3 so I'm gonna change it to com3 and save the file. Now everything is ready to take a backup. Go to low level backup tool folder, open the backup tool. Enter number 1 for all partition lists and here I'm gonna select the third partition because I don't need system and data partitions. In case if you want everything you can select option 1, here I have selected option 3. Press any key to return main menu, enter any folder name, press any key to start backup and you can find this backup in the low level backup tool folder. So we are done taking backup and now we need to boot our phone back to fastboot or bootloader mode. With phone in fastboot mode, unlock your phone if you haven't using fastboot OEM unlock command and boot back to fastboot if your phone restarts. Now we need to flash the TWRP recovery. The installation involves two steps here. First we need to temporarily boot our phone to TWRP by using fastboot boot recovery name dot IMG command and once you are in the TWRP recovery, connect your phone to the PC, transfer this TWRP installer with tsort manager zip file. 
If your phone is not detected after connecting it to PC, right click on this PC, manage, device manager and here under other devices you will see an exclamation mark next to MTP. Now right click on MTP, update driver, browse my computer, let me pick from available drivers and here scroll down to portable devices, hit next and under model select MTP USB device and confirm installation and as you can see MIA1 is detected and now you can transfer files. In TWRP, select the install tab from home screen and flash this TWRP installer and reboot your phone to the recovery to finish the installation process. Now we need to trivialize our phone and for that first we need to format the data partition. Now select wipe from home screen, format data and type yes to continue. If you get an error like fail to mount data partition, boot back to the recovery again and try the same procedure. Now back to the DWRP home screen, advanced tab and select tsort manager, I understand, click next, select repartition. First option which says shrink user data and I'm gonna pick the single boot and repartition. Once this process is done, boot back to TWRP again. Now transfer the vendor image from your PC to your phone. Install tab from TWRP home screen. Install image. Select vendor image file which is transferred and select vendor image partition to flash. Back to home screen, mount tab and select vendor partition here. Now go to the folder on your PC where you have saved all the required files. Select PXD4 AB alpha file about 920 MB and extract the contents to your new folder. Now along with the extracted system image, select two post zip files, triple compatible kernel, in call to Magisk and uh, PLAC fix files and transfer them to your phone. Now go to install tab from TWRP home screen, install image, select the AB alpha image which is transferred and select system partition to flash. Once it is done, go to install tab again, select post1 and post2 files, treble compatible kernel and here I have also selected few zip files for fixes like incall2, plac fix and also magisk and swipe to confirm flash. If in call to flash fails, go to mount tab on home screen, select system partition and flash it again. And reboot your phone. So this is the installation part. The initial boot will take some time, about 5 minutes maybe. First you will get this Android P beta screen after boot sequence. Click OK. Now let's go to settings about phone. As you can see the device name is Pixel XL as this is a port from Pixel XL. It is Android 9 with July 5 security patch and the build date is July 17. Next thing you will notice about the ROM is the persistent notifications in the status bar, the lag while opening apps or navigating through settings and no MTP mode to transfer files. In order to fix MTP mode, go to settings, system, about phone, hit bill number 5 times to enable developer options. Now go one step backwards, advanced tab and under developer options, navigate to default USB configuration and pick file transfer here and as you can see USB debugging and file transfer mode is over now. Next we are gonna fix the lag and play store issue, for that download this Google Play Services APK file from the video description, transfer it to your phone and install it as normal APK and reboot your phone. And now you will notice that there is no system lag and in order to fix the status bar persistent notifications, long press on these notifications, click the i button and force stop these notifications and when the blue pixel setup notification appears again, connect to Wi-Fi and finish the setup. Another thing you will notice that the hardware keys are not backlit, so in order to enable on-screen navigation bar or pixel gestures, open Magisk Manager, slide right from left edge for hamburger menu, module tab, hit the plus icon at the bottom and pick the hardware keys enable zip file, flash it and reboot your phone. Now as you can see we have on-screen keys now, for pixel gestures go to settings, system gestures and enable swipe up on home screen and here we have the pixel navigation gestures now on Mi A1. Initially, there was no fingerprint option for me under security and location. What I did was install any file manager app like Solid File Explorer here, grant root permissions, go to the root folder, 
Vendar lib64 and under hw folder search for the file with name fingerprint.default.so and change it to fingerprint.qcom.so and reboot your phone. As you can see here after rebooting we have pixel imprint which is nothing but fingerprint setup. It worked fine and the fingerprint unlock takes about 2 seconds almost. Strangely, I have tried renaming fingerprint.qcom.so file to default, yet the fingerprint option is still there. The ROM doesn't come with any camera app, it is not hidden, it's not just there. For camera, you can download any Google camera app. I have installed the specific version of Google camera and it worked fine without modifying anything in the build prop. About the things that are working with the camera app, you can take pictures, record videos. There is portrait mode for both front and rear cameras, but sometimes I did notice the app crashing. Apart from this, there is also a Mi camera app which you can install. For portrait mode with Mi camera app, there is a Magis module too in case if you wanna try. About benchmarks, 22 version 7 score is 80,060, Geekbench 4 single core score is 855 and multi core score is 4185. So that's it guys, I was initially planning to include a review too on this video itself but it's getting longer because of the detailed installation process so I will be making another video in a couple of hours or maybe tomorrow. If you find this video helpful hit the like button and if you want more videos like this hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you soon in my next video.